guys, welcome back. Today's video is all about the summer spookies. <laughs> we tend to associate horror and all things scary with the fall, but how many of our favorite horror stories take place at sleepaway camp or during the summertime when people have lots more free activity to stumble upon something creepy? It turns out that Fairfax County is actually a pretty scary place to live. We have our fair share of urban legends, haunted places, and scary stories, but today I wanted to talk about the most famous, which is, of course, the Bunny Man. I'll also share some of my favorite horror and thriller books for you to check out and enjoy at home. So sit back, grab yourself a hot drink, pretend it's not 90 degrees outside, and let's get started. Heads up, the legend that I'm going to tell you about and the books that I'm going to share with you today do deal with death and or violence in some way. If you're not comfortable hearing about those topics, then we'll see you in our next video. Now, I'm not from Fairfax County, and the first thing that I do when I move to a new place is hop on Google and search local urban legend or haunted places in my area. We're very lucky that we live super close to Gettysburg, which is like haunted. <laughs> but I was interested in finding something more local. And let me tell you, the Bunny Man legend does not disappoint. Now, according to the story, the Bunny Man legend goes all the way back to like the early 1970s when a story about an escaped inmate wearing a bunny costume was rumored to be responsible for the deaths of two children in Clifton. As urban legends tend to do, the story has changed quite a bit over the years. Depending on which version of the story you've heard, the bunny man could have been an escaped inmate from Lorton Prison or a resident of a nearby psychiatric hospital. He might lurk all around the DMV or he could be exclusively in Fairfax County. He might indeed be a murderer or he could just be an unstable person in a bunny suit wielding an axe and like running around and terrorizing children, usually around Halloween time. But one thing is for sure, the bunny man legend continues to fascinate us. Lucky for you, a local historian and archivist named Brian Connolly has done just ungodly amounts of research into this legend. And he's put together a super interesting guide called The Bunny Man Unmasked, and it's available for you to peruse and read on our website. Do you want to know if the Bunny Man legend is actually true? Mr. Connolly might just have the answer for you. Link in the description to the webpage. But maybe the bunny man is a little bit too close to home and you're looking for an escape into a YA horror novel or a thriller. You are in luck because I have some recommendations for you. If you're looking for a true sleep with the lights on, genuinely a scared horror story, then I recommend Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. <laughs> Something about it is just like hard to describe. It's like creepy, but also there's really genuinely scary stuff that happens. When Marion moves to Sawkill Rock after experiencing a family tragedy, she expects to have trouble fitting in, making friends at a new school, but what she doesn't expect is that there's a supernatural force on the island that is taking girls Basically girls are just disappearing off the island and nobody really knows why. Unfortunately for Marion, Val, and Zoe, that force is getting closer to them. And worst of all, it seems like that force is getting stronger. Each girl has a unique part to play in the story and it unfolds with twists and turns and gore that I promise you will not see coming and that you won't be able to look away from. If you like the atmosphere of horror more so than actually being scared, then I recommend Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. In this book, one thing is for sure, Summer is dead. But one thing isn't for sure, who killed Summer? 
The whole town believes that her two best friends, Mia and Bryn, pulled a slender man and killed Summer. When Mia and Bryn are united after years apart, they are forced to confront the reality of what really happened to Summer and to come to terms with the role that they played in her death and in her life. This book is more of a thriller than a true horror story, but it does have some sort of like creepy small town vibes, a good old fashioned murder mystery, and a dash of magical realism thrown in for good measure. But maybe you're a true crime buff. If so, I highly recommend A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Not in the least because she and I have very similar names. When Pippa Fitzamobi thinks about the murder of Andy Bell, she's certain of only one thing. Sal Singh did not kill her. But if that's true, then why is everyone in town so certain that Sal killed Andy before committing suicide? When it comes time for Pippa to start working on her senior project, she knows just what she'll do. Solve the murder of Andy Bell and clear Sal's name once and for all. But when the people closest to Pippa have more to do with the crime than she ever anticipated, she finds herself torn between the truth and loyalty. Will Pippa solve the crime before the killer catches up with her? Was Sal really guilty and maybe Pippa has just been blind to the truth for so long? Pick this one up to find out. Oh, and you should definitely listen to this one as an audiobook. It has sort of podcasty vibes and all of the narrators in the audiobook are really great. If you get your scares from reading about the real life horrors <laughs> that surround us, I recommend picking up Devils Within by S.F. Henson. Nate has a huge secret. He was raised in a neo-Nazi compound. His father was the leader of the neo-Nazi community called the Fort. His father is dead because Nate killed him. Now, Nate has a second chance in a new town where nobody knows him and knows anything about his past. At first, Nate has trouble fitting in in a world where people aren't racially segregated and they aren't quick to violence and their social system isn't set up around acts of violence. For Nate, who earned his red laces by spilling blood for the Nazi cause before he was a teenager, this is a really hard adjustment. But when Nate meets Brandon, a black classmate, he finally feels for the first time that he might actually be able to make a real friend. Things are getting better for Nate until the neo-Nazi propaganda flyers start showing up in his town. Will the new leaders of his old community find Nate? And what will they do to him and to his new best friend when they do? And lastly, if you're a graphic novel person, and honestly, who isn't, then I recommend Kim Reaper by Sarah Grayley. Becca has a gigantic crush on Kim. Kim, the college student. Kim, the stylish goth queen. Kim, the part-time Grim Reaper? Becca understands that a girl's gotta keep the lights on, but she's not sure that she can handle Kim's chosen occupation of reaping souls. When a bad night at work turns worse, Kim and Becca will have to work together to make it out alive. Will they get together despite the occupational hazards of Kim's job? Or will Becca be like, Nah, I'm out. <laughs> Pick up the first installment in this series to find out. And that's the video! Friendly reminder to check the links in the description for more information about The Bunny Man and to see all of the books that I mentioned in all available formats. Subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I will see you in our next video. Bye!